Welcome to Tabletop 24, where today we have another arrival. This time it's from Tesseract Games. I've already ditched most of the packaging, and whilst we will be opening this up, this is not strictly an unboxing video. Once we've gone through these smaller packages, we're going to assemble the Infinity Box. Now this setup will be for Marvel Champions the card game, but Tesseract Games are constantly growing their product range, and currently cover games such as Arkham Horror, the Living Card Game, Lord of the Rings, the card game, and Marvel United. So, I'm going to open these up. So, this will be a full storage solution for Marvel Champions and could quite well be for other games. So, let's get some of these open. Well, nicely wrapped and protected. going to go in for a close-up on the dividers. Now to start with here we've got some extras, one for the team-up cards which are the newer additions in some of the hero decks and a deck list for all of the heroes and any custom deck lists or any campaign deck lists uh, there. Pop them off to one side and now we've got a set for each of the expansions and obviously the box, uh, core box. Now each of these dividers are double-sided on some of the newer sets from Tesseract and they will come for each of the encounter sets, each of the heroes and each of the villains for Marvel Champions. Now these are quite nice double sided, nice thickness and are a good shade. We've got the Rise of the Red Skull Pack. Now these are the vertical dividers, which will go nicely in the infinity box, but there are horizontal ones as well, which we've previously had, uh, and they're equally a good quality. So for the core box, obviously you've got the dividers for all of your aspects, and the breakdown of all of the aspects therein. Also the encounters, and the core box heroes and the first wave of heroes and villains. These are really nice dividers and they will go nice in a full set in the infinity box. Okay, and in here we've got the campaign logbook which will include a completion table which will show all your heroes against all your villains and also some custom or further options and it includes uh, a different difficulty track uh, for each one and obviously if you want to colour in colour um, coloured pens you can then track what aspects you're playing and then we've got encounters so quite nice there so just an example of one how to complete. Uh, I've got a file guide, another example. I've got I think, 51 different samples there to run through on some of the campaigns, some of the recordings. Okay, and in here we will have the first part of the dividers, or the box should I say, which will be 
a set of token trays. Now I'll come back towards those a bit later. Okay, so the Infinity Box does come with a full set of instructions, um, which are quite comprehensive. Um, but what you will need uh, is a good quality PVA, marking, masking tape to keep everything a bit together, a suitable surface such as this flat and uh, that you can get a bit mucky if you need to, and a lot of time and a bit of patience. Um, recommended is a paintbrush to, to keep the lines smooth, um, but we're gonna go a bit wild here. A uh, pot of water to clean your brush if you're using one and something to, to clean up with. Okay, so we're gonna get this out of the way and punch it through. Also coming with the set was uh, some extra free stationery of some Bulldog clips, which will come in handy assembling the, the box, um, but also yeah, it's used as part of the packaging. So we've got the, the main box here. assembling and this does stand on some footprint as you can see there it's quite nice and sturdy and it's gonna it's gonna be sitting and holding a good couple of thousand cards and it does come with a magnetic clasp to hold it all shut and we will be PVA and sticking this down uh, at the end, but I mean as you can already see that's made a, a good good footprint there Okay, and then we've got all of the MDF sheets All laser cut Say. with a top lid tray, which is this sheet here. And here we have the internal separators and some more dividers. There's all the bits laid out. Join us back when we uh, get starting on the assembly. And welcome back. Now we've got the, the start of the box uh, going. Like I mentioned earlier, you need a good quality PVA. And what we're going to do is put the box sides together, top and bottom, and just get a good amount of PVA. Now that same. see this is going a bit of everywhere I'm using a table I'm not too worried about and is used for hobbies um, obviously don't do it on your best dining table so, now lifting that up and sliding that one and doing the same there making sure the corners fit nice and snug now 
I'm going to be cheating somewhat because I've got these lovely corner clamps, probably a bit excessive as they are for carpentry, um, but they will do a good job and they will give us a nice, nice tight corner. And the edges just so that they're nice and tight. Clean off any excess glue on the outside corners before we do hand. Find the corner tightly as you stick the masking tape down. Taking very care with the corners. You see that one's just popped off there. And that needs just to be put to one side just to dry off. And what I'll be doing is just give it a quick wipe down. Just while before we let that dry, so I'm gonna do is just run a finger along the inside edge. Just to smooth that out. Now, you, like I said before, you can do this with a paintbrush. I'm a little bit mucky up. Right, and I just do it with a finger. Okay. Tie that edge back in. Looks like that. that can go to one side. Okay. Okay, now we've put that other one to one side, give me a bit of a tidy up. And now we're going to uh, assemble the tray. And tight. Run a finger. And, uh, careful not to push the trays out. This way. Just 
just making sure it's nice and snug and then that's going to get put to one side and dry as well. Okay, now we're going to be looking to assemble the trays. Uh, these can be configured in a single compartment, two compartment or four compartment and we'll be converting one of each. So we're going to give that a go. Go together exactly the same way as the main boxes. And see if we're going to put a bit of tape on these. Just uh, make sure they're all together. and one with the four. So straight ahead for the two. It's just going to have a divider going across. Yeah. So it will just be a quick dab. And for the four compartment, it's the same. Hit the one on the top. And just give that a bit of a clean up over there. Put them to one side to dry off. And you've got some extras there should you wish to change your mind. Okay, now so we've given the uh, the main box a little bit of time to dry. Now we're going to just put in the, the central dividers. So for this need to do is dab a glue on that edge, a little bit there, this bit here, And then you want to be starting with the middle, running that up the side. And it should slot in nicely there. Again, clean off any excess. Now we'll repeat that four more times. Uh, first going right, then left from the centre.
and then it's all about letting everything dry. With our MDF pieces set to one side, we're now going to turn our attention to the outside magnetic flap box. First of all, make sure that you've given this a bit of a test to know how it's going to be going together. You're going to be pulling those bits up and out there. Now we've got ours a little bit close to the edge of the table. So what we're going to do is turn this around so that this flap will hang off the edge of the table just to give us a bit of an easier way to work. We're going to bring in some of the Bulldog clips that were supplied just to give us a second pair of hands whilst assembling. We'll bring up these back flap sides and just use Bulldog clips to hold those together and then we'll pin these back together and we'll use a further Bulldog clip to pin one side. Now once you're comfortable that that's roughly where you're going to want the boxes, go ahead and let that go and peel back the self adhesive strips, pulling the box back up, stretching out the corners just so you've got it as upright as possible and pop back the clip just to give you extra working room. make sure that's all set there again giving that bit of extra firm hold and whilst that's adhering on that side you can then turn your attention to the back side let that loose pull the flaps bring that back up again making sure you put in pressure on that outside corner and holding it all together and then we'll just clip that on just so you can do that hands-free setting making sure going all the way around the box and that it's all comfortable. After giving that a few moments to set, you can see we've got the makings of our external box. With the MDF insert and the external box now glued and dried, it's time to give everything a quick slight dry fit to make sure everything's okay before we give our final glue to the insert and get a full assembly sorted. Now you may notice that this external box is slightly different to the one that we had earlier in the video. This was down to a manufacturing defect with the original. Um, Test Rack Games have been great getting that all sorted. Um, it isn't something that would happen uh, to everybody and we were very unfortunate to have that. But we've got this here now to, to finish the assembly. So first things first, what we're going to do is just make sure that the MDF insert fits nice and snug into the main box, which you can see there. Now before we go ahead and drop that in, just going to take it out. Then we're going to apply some PVA around the bottom and the edges of the external box just to make sure that everything's glued in and nothing starts to move if we, the box gets knocked or dropped. I'm going to put a, a generous amount of glue on the bottom of the box. Get right into the corners. This will just add some extra strength. To it. Now we'll also put some up the sides, making sure you don't go too high that it would affect with the dividers. Okay, and once we're done, we're going to go ahead and finally slide this in. Making sure when you're handling the glued insert to hold it by the outmost dividers, just to give it extra security. And that should go ahead and slot in there. Now it might be really snug as it gets towards the bottom. You can put a good amount of force to make sure it's home. Okay. And whilst that's there and, and in, we will get the top tray and just make sure that all fits nice and snug. As you can see, that does there. And the box closes up nice and tidy. In order to aid with the securing of the external box to the internal insert, we use the supplied Bulldog clips to just secure the edges. Um, obviously this is mainly drying now. Um, but one thing I want to show you with the dividers, so these are the number of dividers you're going to get with the box. Um, and what these actually do, which is quite nice, and you have to be careful which way you put these in, 
is these interlock over each other and um, when you're using them in the insert so just bear that in mind when you're putting everything together you've got things around the right way or you're going to have things butting up against each other inside the insert with our box off drying and we'll turn our attention back to the token trays now each of these token trays on the acrylic does have a peeling protective cover so we'll just take those off as you can see i've already put some tokens on the core box in in the dividers and these will just slide in the trays so And just popping in on the tabs on the end. Okay. I must say it is easier on ones with a divider already in them. It goes in quite nicely there. Now these boxes will go in our main box. Um, and some of the older versions of the Infinity Box will, would go in the tray, um, but this is a newer version. Once everything is dried, I've put everything back in the box, and now let's see the finished article. So, opening up the magnetic clasp, popping that back, you will see the top tray. In here I have got um, Rules Reference, Learn to Play, both campaign books, the villain uh, guides, the catalogue files and all of the hero sheets taking that out now in here you will see um, everything that has been released up to and including Gamora so the only things yet to come out in this current cycle are Venom and Drax um, and you can see there's still a lot of space in here so just run through what I've done um, down on this first column you've got the majority of heroes, some that I'm still playing, most have had their aspects stripped out. Then I've got heroes that I'm yet to play which are all the, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, then we've got all of the aspects. Um, I will be separating them out into um, the type within the aspect, uh, but we'll do that later. Um, then we've got all of the villains, um, all the way through from Rhino to Ronan. And then all of the encounters uh, for each set and all the different modular ones. Uh, in this section here, we've got the larger Ant-Man and Wasp um, in a divider. Some spare dividers. Uh, now I've got about seven or eight left over. Um, I've also got health trackers, token trays that you see in assemble. Um, and I've just got a deck here that I'm, I'm currently using uh, for my current campaign. Now, as you can see, uh, it's obviously a bit of foam core. There's a lot more space in here. Um, you could probably almost double what you've got by taking out some of the, the tokens and extras. Um, so, real nice spacious box. A lot of room to grow. Everything in one place. Now, it is a sizable weight. Um, and it needs to be kept horizontal um, when stored. Just obviously to prevent any falling out and one thing I will say which I've done and it's completely unnecessary but I have sleeved um, each of the dividers just to give them that bit of extra protection like I say not required but I've done it just to probably go a bit over the top okay so thank you for joining us for this assembly of the infinity box alongside uh, a preview of uh, the heroic bundle of all the vertical dividers and the token trays and the account log book um, from Tesseract Games. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Take care.